So you got bit by the soap making bug. You have uh, scoured the Pinterests. You have watched the soapy videos. You have uh, looked up all of the beautiful, awesome designs that could be, will be, ever have been, and you are ready to make soap. Or so you think, because you haven't started that process yet, because it feels a little bit overwhelming, getting all of the things in line and ready to go. You came to the right video, or specifically the right playlist, because I am here to help you do the soapy things. And should this be the first time that you are seeing my face, my name is Mrs. Soap and Clay, and I am a maker of soaps and cosmetics and have been for several years. I have a background in chemistry that I use to educate the sudzers on the finer points of making soap. And I have been teaching people how to make soap for about eight years live in person. So that is me. Hello, welcome. And we are going to be doing within this playlist uh, back the basics of soap making. And we are going to start at the beginning and end at the end and see where we go from there. And I'm going to tell you more about what this particular portion of this playlist is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 325 of 365 days of soap. And today, as I said, we are starting a playlist for back the basics with soap making. So this is going to be a really good, concise, hopefully, place for brand new soap makers to come and reference when they have questions about the actual soap making process. Because while I do give you tons and tons of information throughout all of my videos, I have noticed lately that I do so within the videos themselves and nothing really super succinct because I do have a tendency to ramble. So we are going to be doing this playlist, breaking it down into the pieces of the soap making process so you can follow along and make sure you have all of your ducks in a row. And yeah, so we are going to be starting with lie where it all sort of begins. Okay, so first up, what is lye and why is it needed for this whole soapy journey? Well, lye is an alkali and it is going to be part of a very necessary uh, process, chemical reaction called saponification that turns oil and water, if the fatty acids specifically of oil and your water into soap, into a solid bar of soap. Now, because lye is caustic, there are some safety precautions that definitely you should always pay attention to when you are making. And currently what I am right now is not really following those safety precautions. My hair is down, my arms are exposed, I have no gloves on. So let me get those things on and we can go from there. Okay, hair is pulled back, long sleeves are on, and this is something I definitely recommend you do whenever you start your soap making every time you do a new batch because you know safety first we don't want hair falling into our eyes and us brushing it off when our gloves are covered with raw soap batter so definitely keep that in mind also in the soaping space we should never have kids or pets or food really just keep it soap specific finish that task and then move on to the others for sure another component within uh, lye safety because again it is caustic it's very burny it can cause you know caustic burns on your skin you want to always have gloves. And I have seen so many new soap makers think gloves and they get those big, thick kitchen gloves. 
And I mean, you can do that, but in all honesty, in the soap making world, you really do need the dexterity to make and skewer and do all the things. And so I really do recommend just a pair of nitrile gloves that fit you. You want to make sure that they're not overly big, otherwise the tips of your gloves are going to be falling into the soap batter. This is a prime example of that in kind of what is lovingly called lunch lady gloves. You see how big these are on my hands. I will constantly be having to try to pull these down and keep soap batter off of the, the ridges while I'm making soap. So that's definitely not something that I would recommend. Long sleeves to cover your arms and your wrists and whatnot in case of soap splashing. And that can happen. And the last thing you want to be worrying about while you are mixing your lye solution is where you left your towel to wipe everything off. So long sleeves and your gloves for sure. Another very important part of the whole soap making thing is going to be your safety glasses. Now, you almost never see me in these in, you know, videos because I am making the soap and talking over so you don't see my face a whole lot. But safety glasses are very, very important. Uh, you do not want this to splash up in your eye. It can cause blindness. So definitely respect that when it comes to the lie as well. And that's the whole thing with lie in general. You want to respect what it is in and of itself it's not a scary thing to work with it's really no different than using you know any sort of hot or sharp objects in your kitchen when you are cooking if you are capable of that respecting that and the dangers that can come with cooking or with driving you can also handle the lie no problem you just take the necessary uh, safety precautions now when it comes to lye spillage one of the things that you definitely need to keep in mind is how to clean up lye in case of unfortunately i've seen way too many people online say that the best thing to do for a lye spill on your on your body is to put vinegar on it vinegar does work to neutralize the lye because again this is a chemical reaction between an alkali between a caustic and an acid and so it's working to neutralize that makes sense but it does so by heating up super duper fast and so if you have lye on your skin do not pour vinegar on it the first thing you need to do is follow the packaging instructions and run it under cold water for a very 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 long time no vinegar to wipe down your surfaces after you're done making soap a vinegar solution is completely acceptable but you should still stay gloved during that time just in case there's some rogue lye hanging out so vinegar for surfaces never for skin now why do we need lye in the first place well as we all know the oil and water don't mix so if i wanted to convert this oil which is uh, about two ounces of olive oil into soap why can't i just put water into it well that is realistically the reason why you can't do that oil and water do not mix they separate and so in order for them to actually melt together into a cohesive solution we need something that will essentially emulsify it but in this case it's saponification and so that's where your lye comes in and i know what you're thinking what happens if we just put the appropriate amount of lye into the solution that i just did right here will that then become soap we will get there we will definitely test that so you can see that in real time for sure but lye is needed for every single batch of soap that is made, and that includes melt and pour. And I know that there's a lot of confusion surrounding that, but here's the thing. When soap is made, if the recipe is sound, there is no lye remaining in the soap. Be that cold process, you know, bar soap, or hot process, or liquid soap, or melt and pour, which is usually done in a version of hot process. That is true. No more lye is in the bar of soap because it has been consumed during the chemical reaction. However, in order to make that chemical reaction, saponification a thing, lye has to be used. So if you feel comfortable dipping your toe into the whole cold process or hot process world, you are going to need to be comfortable with working with lye. And that's why you're here. Now, one of the questions we get asked a whole lot is, what is lye? What does it look like? Where can I get it? Uh, realistically, this is lye. And you can get it in all manner of places. I do recommend going to a soap-specific place to get it, really. 
So this particular one is from Sierra Candles and you see how we have the little beads here. Now, lye can come in bead or flake form and really it's user's preference as to what you use. I use the beads. I have been told that the beads are harder to, you know, keep track of and they can, I don't know, roll off your counter. I have never particularly had a problem with that. But be it flakes or be it the little balls, it's going to work exactly the same in your soap regardless. Now, as far as purity goes for lye, no lye is ever going to be 100% pure, but this is one of the reasons why I do recommend you go to soap specific, you know, sites and, and vendors in order to get your lye. So you know that you are getting good grade lye that is as potent as you can get it. And there's also a good way to run a test on your lye if you're not sure about its potency and how pure it is. You can do a one to one ratio. So one part lye, one part water, which is all you ever need in soap and immediately test how hot it gets. Ideally, something like that in mixing, say two ounces of lye with two ounces of water, your solution should heat up to around 200 degrees right away. If it doesn't, that means that you have less purity. If you have less purity, it's still going to make soap, but your soap is going to be a little bit more super fatted, which we will get into in another video. For the lye process itself, mixing it and getting it ready, as I said, there's a heat component with this. So let's go ahead and mix up a batch of lye water and we can show you what that process is and just how hot these things get. So the first step when you're mixing your lye solution is going to be to measure out your water. And we use distilled water in the soap making world so we can control all possible variables. There may be minerals or other treatments within your water from the tap that you cannot control and could do things like discolor your soap. That's really the only thing that it's ever going to do though. So if you feel like you can safely use your tap water, that's completely fine as well. I have weighed out for a one pound batch of soap, the appropriate amount of distilled water. Now in a second container, I am going to weigh out my lye. We work with weights in the soap making world for precision. And so I do recommend getting a nice scale and it doesn't have to be anything super fancy, but it does need to be a scale that you use with all of your soap batches just to maintain consistency throughout. And all of these things I will also link in the description, the scales and the suppliers that I think are really great for this purpose. Especially when you are starting out, it is a very important thing to measure out your water and your lye separately. Because if you overshoot your lye, you now have the potential of a lye heavy batch and you're going to have to adjust your oils to compensate for that. And that's definitely not something that a beginner is going to be super great at. Once both have been weighed out, they've been weighed out and they are ready to go. The next step is you're going to take your lye and put it into your water solution and you are going to stir until all of the lye granules all are dissolved. And that really is just as easy as doing this. Now it is imperative that you do this process in a heat safe container because of the heat that comes off. I mean, what we have just done is we have just made, well, the water and the lye both very, very angry. We have made an unstable solution here by incorporating this lye into this water and it is getting very, very hot. At this point, it is warmed up to 182 degrees, which is a little bit dangerous because you're dealing with not only the potential of a chemical burn because of the caustic nature of lye, but also you're dealing with a potential heat burn. So what you're going to want to do at that point is you're going to want to set your lye aside and let it cool down. The standard rule of thumb for most lye solutions is 120 degrees or below. There are instances in the soap making world wherein you can soap that hotter and you can use a hotter lye solution, but again, we are back to basics here. So let it cool down to at least 120 degrees. I would recommend 100 or maybe even 90. Put it to a nice closer to room temperature before proceeding with your actual soaping. 
But in the meantime, while you're waiting for your lye solution to cool down, you can get your oils ready. You can get your colors ready. You can weigh out your scent that you're using. You can make sure that your molds are ready to go. There's a lot of prep work involved in making soap. And so you can do all of those things while your lye is cooling in a nice, nice safe space. Speaking of lye cooling and nice safe spaces, a lot of people do prefer to wear a mask while soaping because the fumes of the lye can, you know, interact with the lining of your, of your lungs and make you cough. I personally have never had a problem with that and never had a use for a mask, but you know, better safe than sorry. If you feel comfortable, put on one of those mask things. That's a great idea. Now, as far as where you get your lye, I personally like for the beginning soap maker that's just starting out to look at Sierra Candles for lye, as well as uh, Brambleberry, and also the Soap Guy. Now, the Soap Guy, his best deals are when you buy 12 pounds, I believe. I think you buy 10 pounds and you get two of them free. And he has, I think, the cheapest prices on the market right now, but you are, going to have to buy you know 12 pounds of lye which will take you a little bit to get through so if you're not super sure that you're going to be able to get through that you know just pick up something small like this from sierra candles or brambleberry and use that in your initial batches so to recap all things lie uh lie is a caustic it can definitely burn your skin so you make sure that you are appropriately geared up whenever you are working with your lie solution the things that you need in order to create your lie solution are your lie obviously your water preferably distilled a good scale with which to measure everything out a heat safe container and that can be a heat safe plastic like the beakers that I just showed you. It can be a metal container like a stainless steel carafe that you would use to froth milk for espressos. Or it can be a glass container. Glass is very, very controversial. I understand. But the information that's out there right now is just very, very bad anecdotal information regarding glass. If you're interested in that, I did a deep dive with a glass expert on the channel during year one, and it's in the live category playlists, and you can learn all about that. But honestly, just use your common sense when it comes to glass. If you're putting a cold pan of lasagna in a big glass container into a hot oven that you have heated up to 425 degrees, and it doesn't explode, and that's not even Pyrex. Are you going to be fine with a solution that goes from room temperature to no more than 200 degrees? The answer to that is of course yes, but always use what makes you feel comfortable. And if you feel more comfortable with plastic, do plastic. If you feel more comfortable with stainless steel, do, do stainless steel. The only thing that you can never ever mix lye in is an aluminum container. Aluminum actually interacts with the lye and it does off gas and it's not a good time, it's not a lot of fun. A lot of soap makers have done videos on that reaction, so feel free to go find those on the YouTubes as well. But yeah, that's basically it for lye. It's not a terrifying thing. And again, if you can cook, if you can bake a cake, if you can cook a hamburger, you can soap. You can work with the lye. Just again, respect it. Just like you do every other thing that you work with in life. The next video in this playlist will be about all of the other materials that you need for soap making. So I will give you a complete list of all the things that you should have on hand, as well as the things that might be good to have on hand, as well as a list of where you can find all said things in the next video. So I hope you had fun with this today. I hope you found it informative. If you're interested in the rest, obviously subscribe. That would be awesome. For my Sudzers, you are subscribed. You are awesome. Thank you. I'm out of here for today. Thank you for joining me for an all things lie, fast and dirty, back to basics, soap making thing. And I will see you guys all in part two. Bye.